You know, Lionheart has kind of a special place in my heart. They're not the pinnacle of what you could consider the most well-known dungeon circles, but if you played any of their games, you know that they are good at two things. Beat em up games, and binding the escape key to exit them. No, seriously, why would you do such a thing? On a more serious note, their games are really nice to play and are really well polished. You would not believe at first that those games are fan made. To be precise, two of them firmly grasped my attention. The Tempest of Heaven and Earth and Mystical Chain. I think I have drooled enough on Mystical Chain during the fan games and us video, so instead of repeating myself, I will talk about the game which still makes me want to play it to this day. But before we do that, I'm just going to say that I'll divide the review in 4 points. Story, presentation, gameplay, and bosses. So we are not going to lose any more time. Let's take a look at the Tempest of Heaven and Earth, also referred by its Japanese name, Tenjo no Tempest. Alright, let's do it. So, what is the Tempest of Heaven and Earth? Well, let's start with the story, shall we? Welcome to the skies in Gensokyo, more precisely on the small island of Tenshieniku on a rock at 12 o'clock. Located in Bavahagra, your local provider of earthquakes. Speaking of earthquakes, look, it's happening again! But Tenshi is kinda surprised because she isn't responsible for this one. Who would have thought that the one who has the power of reading the atmosphere knew of this incident? Well, not Tenshi apparently. Asking why this is happening, Tenshi doesn't want Iku to go, but surprise surprise! Look who it is! No one else but the beautiful 17 years old Yukarin! Man, if she wasn't overpowered, you would think Yukari is the one creating those incidents. But I'm getting off track. In order to prevent Tenshi from interfering with her plans, Yukari just throws her off onto Earth with the help of one of our gaps. You know, your typical day in Gensukyo. It's now time for Tenshi to save the day and try to find Iku in order for her to explain. And here we are, in the bamboo forest. Looks like the thousand meter fall left Tenshi completely intact, but yeah, this is pretty simple and straightforward. It doesn't ask for brain cells, but it doesn't deviate too far from the canon of Toho to be completely fake and made up. And that's honestly just what you expect from a fan game, a simple yet enticing premise that makes you want to move forward, not an overly cookie cutter or over the top story. This allows it to be free in how it wants to be shaped and also allows for lots of characters to be in the same game. But now that the story is out of the way, let's look at, well, the graphics, the way that the game looks. Question. Do you like grass? Green grassy fields with lots of trees? If you don't, then don't worry, the whole game isn't like this. Sure, the first stages may have a lot of similarities, with one being a bamboo forest, the other grassy plains, and finally another forest. But the later ones have more variety with mountains and just hell. Really, it's hard to complain when the game is so good looking. Sure, it was made in 2013 when the likes of Hopeless Masquerade were out, but it doesn't prevent it from looking like a polished game. The attack animations are fluid, the backgrounds are sufficient, and the game runs at a steady 60 FPS on the two computers that I own, one being much less powerful than the other. Combine that with the fact that the game has a varied roster of enemies and hazards and it makes for a formidable performance. If you are Japanese. Yeah, because if you are not, then in that case you will not be able to learn some of the mechanics of the game, since you cannot understand what is being told to you through the in-game tutorial. This was one of the major issues I encountered during my playthrough and it was kind of incapacitating. I can't blame that on Lionheart. The game is made for a Japanese public, so it's perfectly normal that the game is entirely in Japanese. The real question we should be asking is, why isn't there a translation patch for this game? But yeah, I digress, since this isn't really a flaw, more like a problem linked to the language barrier. More importantly, look at all of these colors and music! 
I don't know what's with Lionheart's games, but they're always so colorful and the best part is that they don't try to be too shiny either. When you start, you have lush green grass and bamboo that contrast from the shiny white color of the enemy, which clearly points out that this is one. You will rarely see less than 5 shades of colors on the screen, which means that your eye is always stimulated and that the game never feels boring to look at. I think this is one of the major strengths of the game. It knows how to captivate the eye. The music also knows when to pick up and give you a feel of urgency, which you need in order to progress forward. But this is not the only major advantage that this game has, as it also knows how to make the player feel good when it lands a hit. Speaking of which, let's talk a bit about the gameplay, shall we? As I said, in this game you take control of Tenshi, and if you played the fighting games, you know she can summon some pretty mighty spells. Well, guess what? You're not restrained here! Go and unleash your wrath upon your shitless foes, as they won't be able to fight back! Let's settle down for now and explain the controls. I'll use the default ones, though they can be bound differently if you feel more comfortable with another setup. Z either hits the enemy with melee if you are close to them, or shoots them with the shot type you have chosen if you are afar. Now, can I just say how good it feels to hit enemies? That's what I mean by Lionheart knows how to make good beat em up games. The impact that you inflict to your enemies is just enough to let you know that they won't get up ever again. But a good thing about basic combos is that you have plenty of variations. You have your normal, aerial, downwards, upwards, and charged attack. That leaves you with plenty of options to massacre your opponents, but ironically, the combos aren't the most effective way to kill. No, your most effective weapon is dashing, with the A key. You heard me right, I said dash. To put it bluntly, if you dodge your enemy's attack right before he hits you, you will make the enemy vulnerable to yours, making it take extra damage. And when I mean extra damage, it most often than not results in an instant kill. And in order to inflict this, you must hit them with the sword of Iso bound to the X key. Although you need to be careful since dashing and using the sword have the same energy meter that depletes quite quickly. When the right conditions are set, you can hit your enemy with the sword, unleashing this deafening yet almost orgasmic sound effect. Seriously, if I had to say, for me this is what makes the whole gameplay worth it. This little sound just tickles your brain and gives you an instant dopamine shot that makes you want to try it again. The best part is that depending on the enemy you just hit, your sword will unleash their elements, which will give you buffs, whether they are instant like electricity, over time like the wind, or not always useful like fire. But yes, most of the puzzle solving will make use of the sword and dash in one way or another, which is why I say that the gameplay revolves around it. But anyway, let's get back to the controls. C makes you jump. You know how jumping works, right? Well here, you have two jumps which can come in handy for tricky platforming. Also, a small thing that the game doesn't really explain. If you want to stay in the air, you can press down and jump at the same time after the first jump. This will make Tenshi hover on her keystone and though you cannot move in that position, it allows you to take leaps of faith and see further than first expected. It's really handy and makes me wish I knew about it before stage 5. S switches your shot type. You can have up to 4 shot types available at the same time, but you can also change them in the menu which is Q when acquiring upgrades. Same goes for the spell cards which can be declared with D and deal a significant amount of damage if played right, although I didn't use them that much during my playthrough. They are a welcome addition as some parts are really harsh towards new players, Though, in general, I would say that the game is relatively nice when it comes to level progression, making the level more and more difficult as the game goes on, well, that except it's stage 6, which is meant to build up the upcoming fights. But overall the game is pretty nice when it comes to picking your fights, although you have a necessary boss fight at the end of each level. And while we are on the subject, why don't we talk about bosses, as they are a pretty important part of the game. Most of them attack by pure misunderstanding, after all, it's not like you are the one who previously brought an earthquake and one is happening right now, huh? 
I won't go as far as to spoil every boss, so let's put a limit. I'll stop at the three first bosses. I think they're a good indicator of how the game works when handling boss fights. The boss fights work like so. This is the number of spell cards left, or the lives of the boss. This is the number of points you'll get once you defeat this specific spell card and it will decrease the more time you take. And finally, this is the health of the boss for this card along with the amulet. The amulet can be broken with charge attacks in order to stun the opponent and give you free hits while it's recharging. It is fairly straightforward and you won't be lost if you played some other beat em ups. The first boss, Raisin, is a good indicator to tell you if you understood the basic game mechanics. She isn't hard and only requires a bit of concentration. The second boss, Futo, heavily emphasizes on what you learned during that particular stage. How to dodge enemy attacks to do the maximum damage and hear that sweet sound. She has tougher patterns and obviously more health, but still respects the fact that you might be a beginner. And the third boss, Nui, is where you draw the line between you and the rest of the game. It's there that you see whether you understood how the game works or not. If not, then you can be sure you'll die from her attacks. All of them have a special theme and generally try to surprise you as much as possible. When you are doing a perfect run, their final card change in order to give you some more challenge, which again, is a welcome change. Overall, they prove to be a challenge if you are not prepared, and after stage 3, they will test you thoroughly in order to know if you are ready for the next stage. So, I think you know what I'll say in that conclusion, right? The game is absolutely stunning for a fan game. You don't need any prior knowledge of any game genre to play it, and if you just pick it up and play, you'll have a fun time. It's those kinds of games that make me think that the Toe fandom is really dedicated to make itself known during conventions like the Comic Kit. Maybe this is why it's still one of the top selling franchises over there. In addition, I haven't said it during the rest of the video since I didn't think it would fit anywhere, but the updated version of the game, version 1.11, has a lot of new stuff to polish it even more. A training mode, a combo mode where you have to dish the most damage in 10 seconds, a boss rush and a lunatic boss rush. So if you thought the game was too easy, you're now served. Added on top of that are achievements related to training, combo attack and the boss rush. There are 40 of them in total and unlocking 5 of them gives you a piece of concept art, up to 8 pieces. So if you aren't to that, you have a lot of work to do. Really, Lionheart doesn't disappoint me in the slightest. Although I am kind of concerned about them. You see, they haven't updated their website a lot and seem to be developing a game for another franchise now. I would normally say that this is a shame, but I can't really go against their decision now, can I? Oh well, I should not be thinking about it this way. Let's hope they will continue making those kinds of games in the future. Anyway, I am not done with the game, so I'll keep trying to get those achievements. In the meantime, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are interested by the content, and to join the Discord if you want to give ideas or just discuss. Thanks for watching everyone, and see you next time.